we speak. Eastern suburbs led out by Fatty Horton make their way onto the arena by passing the, uh, the sign. Fireworks have started in the background. There they are. It's the Eastern Suburbs sign make their way onto the Townsville Reserve. Committed to a wholehearted effort tonight to make up for that terrible showing last weekend. Fireworks just behind us here in our commentary area, which is a very wet spot indeed. But it's great to see so many people still come out in these conditions. Tickets are going along nicely until the big wet of yesterday and today. We just await Canterbury Banks down. That's so often the case. They can falter in the wet. Terry Lamb looking very grim and determined, as is David Gillespie. And it looks as though the local support's going to go by way of eastern suburbs. Fireworks still continuing. Not a bad task in itself, but I saw this rain. In fact, Graham, it's a tremendous, tremendous task that the old crew here at uh, of, of 10 and local support have uh, enabled us to get this telecast to air tonight because really they've just absolutely bucketed down torrential rain. Just uh, talking about Paul Bud for a moment, he's a friend of mine, but I must say he's experiencing a bit of a slump in form, particularly after the effort last week. I know you can't blame a captain for a flogging, one player but uh, this man here has got to lift his own form and he's got to get the players behind him. They've got to put up a performance tonight or they'll lose credibility totally. See who makes the biggest noise tonight, Canterbury or East? Farrah. Anley, real difficult tonight for both sides. David Smith, straight into Gillespie. Farrah charges over the top of him. Darren Smith in there as well. Morton goes without, back to Salvatore, taken by Thomas. Quinn makes it to the 22. Mud everywhere here at the Townsville Sports Complex. The kick in nicely. Alston. Nearly the entire Eastern Suburbs team right in front of him. Beats one. Sherlock was the man that missed him. Robinson. Hat trick of tries last week. The big winger. Eastern Suburbs to dig deep tonight. They know they owe it. Not just to their fans, but more importantly to themselves. Kevin Moore spent so much time at dummy half at this Canterbury side. Pay. Taken short of his own halfway line. Lamb. Kicking away from Silver. The ball just sat there as soon as it hit the mud. Salvatore, charge on the blind side, bounced backwards by Pay. Advantage was played by Armand. He'll bring the Bulldogs back for inside the five. Corcoran, one of the offenders. Water everywhere down this eastern suburbs end of the ground. Smith. Russell Fairfax hoping. An absolute reversal of form. Hardy. Quinn. Taken by Dunn. Tuella is a late scratching from this eastern suburb side. He's running from dummy half tonight. Would have been very important. There's a dust up between Salvatore and Pay. Plenty of players jumping in. David Smith just leapt in there and hurdled nearly all of them. Yeah, well, that's absolutely stupid. That business that Smith went on with there, that is uh, dumb, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him walk with stupid interference with a brawl that was none of his, none of his doing, or none of his business. We saw a blow up against Cronulla. Maybe the referees and touch judges have been told to take a tough stand. Well, Salvatore's always on a short fuse. You, you can always, as we watch it now, there's Vaughton comes, carrying the ball forward, gets to about the advantage line, and then the, uh, the trouble starts. There it is, just from behind there. You see uh, Salvatore throwing punches for no reason at all. I thought he was the instigator of that. Well, here comes Smith. Well, he should be spoken to, too. Very stupid, that was. Very dumb. Well, he wants Salvatore back. He looked to be the man that started at wrestling with pay. 
Well, there's uh, Vaught fighting his way forward, and Pay cops one there when uh, he didn't really have his... Uh, he wasn't even facing the right direction. They well, want Ar the referee to get on with it, surely. Yes, Armand, Armand's gone beyond the point now. He's, he's delayed the proceedings too much. Now, Smith's got 10 minutes for coming in, and that's a very good decision. A very good decision indeed. Now, that will hopefully stop other people idiot enough to come charging in when they've got no business to be there. Well, the replay told it all, Rex, that Salvatore was the instigator and Smith made it worse. That's something in their favour. Thomas. Ducked under one. Of course, Canterbury have shown their hand with more. And Alshon running from that dummy half position. Now a very big five metres asked from Eastern Suburbs. Bill, I'd like you get your point on the way they are getting these teams or trying to get them back some eight or ten meters graham it's true they the referees do get the players back more than five but let me say this and even though it's not in the rule book if we had a five meter meter rule in defense with modern defenses no one would ever score all right scrums are all even penalties too and gilmeister takes his turn at a chat with neil Armand. Well, Gilmeister there with a Nissan replay with a, a right hand that went in in an attempted stiff to the head and then a left arm. So he's gone to the Quinella. He's been picked up by arm and the penalty uh, kick will probably uh, be taken by Lamb from the quarter, about ten and a half metres in from the sideline. Chances of goal are going to be very important tonight. Strikes it well, fading away taken by McGann. Now Robinson's coming and looking for the football. You can tell he hasn't had much to do. He's pretty clean. He was. Now Pay. Shem fellas impressing me tonight. Young Pay, he's getting through a lot of work, as is Dunn. Yes. Dunn is brought down about 32 metres away. Here's Alchin. A little kick and chase. Ran into bridge, and he's going to get the penalty. Well, Nissan replay, watch it yourself, see whether you consider it to be a dive or whether it was a legitimate uh, penalty. Uh, my eyes had flashed through to see where the ball resulted after the kick, and I'm afraid I didn't see it, but you judge that one. And maybe just outside the right hand upright. Well, this one will have the redeeming feature. If he doesn't kick the goal, it should go dead from that distance. The rain pelts down again as Corcoran lines this one up. Plenty of height from him. Plenty of direction as well. We have our first score. Corcoran lands it for the Bulldogs and Canterbury Banks down lead Eastern Suburbs, 2-0. Taking it away in the forwards again and obviously this is what Eastern Suburbs have got to do. At the moment they've been kicking territorially trying to get the ball up to the Canterbury Banks down into the field and it wouldn't surprise me to see Gary Bridge come in and use some attacking kicks. Turn the ball over. And now Canterbury Banks down with their little man, Kevin Moore, working the ball out of dummy half. I haven't got one, mate. Canterbury again, Andrew Farrer this time bringing the ball away. More to dummy half. Through Alchin. Alchin runs wide, makes a tremendous break up the centre of the field. Steps off the left foot, he's going to score and Jason to the uprights. That's a tremendous Canterbury banks down try. An individual effort by Jason Alchin and just what the Bulldogs needed. Well, we're on the replay. You people at home can see it, but I can't see it. Moore went the dummy half. He fired the ball onto Jason Alchin. Alchin stepped off the left foot, made an incursion through the eastern uh, suburbs defence, came to Rod Silver, the fullback. He beat him by stepping <coughs> off the left foot and then beat him for pace and went in to score the first four-pointer of the evening. Well, we're on another replay, which you people at home can see. Unfortunately, I can't. It was Jason Alchin who did it all on his own. He's the sort of player that shines under these conditions, and you'll pardon the pun. Tremendous try. His first try of the season, Jason Alchin, and it came at a very timely point just before half-time. And he strikes this one sweetly as well, so Canterbury makes down. Shoot further in front. It's now eight points to nil. The Bulldogs lead Eastern Suburbs. Alchin. Quick hands for Gillespie now. And he's uh, gotten very well too to get the pass away for Corcoran, who's gone without it. The 
players were so intent on uh, having a chip at each other, they forgot about the football. Bridge and I think it's Corcoran getting involved in back play. And a facial massage there. Robinson, I think it was, who was getting involved. They want to concentrate on what they're about because Eastern Suburbs in a very handy position now as Vorton brings it up towards the quarter line. The one-hander is back for Hardy and then quick hands through Cook back to Smith. Smith inside the quarter. Still going strongly. Great run from Smith. Ten metres short of the line. Golden opportunity now for Eastern Suburbs. Here's Gilmister. Somehow got a miraculous pass back for Bridge. Now George Arliss, now Vorton. Back it comes for Silver. This is great stuff from Eastern Suburbs. Cook to Smith. Smith goes for the line, gets it down and scores a magnificent try. In any conditions, that was a great try. And David Smith, how sweet it is. Smile, Russell, that was great. Well, let's see it again on the Nissan replay, and you'll enjoy it as well. Hardy's the man that started it. Out to George Arliss. Away there to Patty Vorton. He gets the pass away, even though he was enveloped in the tackle, one-handed. Got it back to Hardy. Hardy goes around there, rolls the ball off his hand out to Cook. Cook gives it away to Smith, and Smith fights his way forward. As you can see, he just refuses to be tackled. The play then goes back midfield, where uh, there's still more of the Eastern Suburbs players. Now, the Gilmeister one was incredible. How he got the pass away there, I'll never know. But through it, went back to George Arliss, off to Borton. Borton gets it back to Silver. Silver goes across field, uses that pace I was talking about, out to uh, Smith, and then on to... Now, out of Smith now from, uh, I believe it was Cook. Yes, that was a marvellous try, but Gilmeister deserves a lot of credit for the way he got the pass away in that particular tackle there. He was almost on the ground. There's Borton again, swinging the ball out there, out to Silver, watching it accelerate. He really covers the ground. And out it goes finally to Smith, and he's able to get himself over the line and ground the ball correctly. Well, I think, uh, I hope we gave that as graphic a description as we could on that one, because it was an absolutely marvellous try. In any conditions? Best, in any conditions. If that had been even my holier-than-holy team that had scored that try, I'd have said that was great. Well, it was fitting that Smith should uh, score it because uh, he was certainly instrumental in that. That surging run of his early on was just great. And that's a, the angle he has. Fairfax has seen enough for the first half. He wants to take the boys in. That was David Smith's first try for the year. And what a beauty it was. Now, this is uh, about three metres in from touch. Great angle you have. You can see for yourself just how close he goes with this. And it's just to the left. Good effort from David Smith. Couldn't have the extras, but the Eastern Suburbs side on the board. 8-4, Canterbury now leading Eastern Suburbs. Only 8-4 to the Bulldogs. Good ball away from McGann to bust Canterbury on the fringe. Great ball from McGann for Silver. Does he have the pace? Elton won't get him, he'll score! Great try, put it down to McGann. He slipped a brilliant ball back there halfway. Eastern Suburbs have stung Canterbury after the break. Yes, I was only uh, watching McGann a few moments ago thinking that his work rate was uh, coming back to what I re recollect him playing. And there he suddenly makes this bus, turns his back, gives the ball to Silver, the young fleet-footed uh, fullback, who is just absolutely sensational over the ground. He covers an enormous amount of ground very, very quickly. And that was a beautiful bit of backing up by him. He's grinning like a Cheshire cat too. Now watch M McGann as he turns the ball, takes the tackle, gives the pass to Silver. At that point, there was a try on for all seasons, you heard in the commentary. But Silver ran round Alchin. I don't really blame Alchin for that because he was standing still and had to move forward to try to cut him off, but uh, he had plenty of side space. That is a splendid try. That is perfect forward play to be able to make forward progress, then get the pass away in the tackle. That is great stuff. Just 22 years of age, Silver picks up his first try of the season. What an important one for the Roosters. The upset on the cards and there have been so many so far in the Winfield Cup. Chris Anderson will be a worried man. Smith from out wide. Strong kicker even in these conditions. Round the corner it comes. Hooking too much. 
But the scoreline, eight all here, East and Canterbury. Dean. And now he's putting himself into the clear. Swift. 30 metres away from the eastern suburb line. Now it's in Dunn, Gillespie. Lamb was taken out of the play. Referee That's saw it. A penalty. He saw it. Terry, Terry Lamb taken out of the play there by uh, one of the Eastern Suburbs players before he got the ball. Hugh McGarn was the man, and it's got to be a, a sin bin, surely. Well, here's the action. Now, watch it. Here's Lamb. He's taken there, pulled back, and uh, looks at the referee. It's five minutes in the bin for McGarn. So Hugh gets a chance to have a rest for five minutes. Penalty has already been given to Canterbury. Not a rest, I'm sure, that he would want. I think his coach up there will be going through the first stages of cardiac arrest after that. So the penalty has been given, and Corcoran has what would normally be expected to be a pretty easy shot for goal. So Jamie Corcoran with the attempt to put the Bulldogs in front. No mistake for him. So Canterbury grab that lead again, 10 points to 8 over East. Able to play it forward. Takes it inside the quarter now. Some pressure for Canterbury. As East are lined out deep. Back for Bridge. Still inside the quarter. Now Georgialis. McGahn. Flicking back for George Alice. And he's pulled out. He's pulled out Andrew Farrer. Well, watch this again. You'll see uh, George Alice running strongly, and he's taken in a in a tackle, and then apparently uses the hand again in the tackle. Now watch it. There it was, the right hand coming down in a chopping motion, the forearm on the uh, head of George Arliss, so the penalty is going to go to uh, Eastern Suburbs. And Neil Armand showing the caution to Farrah. Penalty to East. Just about on their quarter line. And uh, well, they've lost their goal kicker, of course. Yeah, Smith has left the field. Sherlock is going to uh, take the shot for goal. Now see if he can get some sand out of the little a little tin. Well, Sherlock had some successes, uh, an all black play. Yes, all he's, uh, as our director facetiously said, he's all black tonight. <laughs> I'm sure he'd be very, uh, enjoy, would have enjoyed that remark, but uh, he has had some success as a goal kicker, but not with Eastern Suburbs all that much. He's only kicked on very rare occasions with them. Just about. Uh, well, maybe half a metre past. Well, there's the quarter line you can see there. That's a good look at the goalpost. This to level the scores. Strikes it well. It's a goal. This football game is all tied up. 10 all, Eastern Canterbury, here at Townsville. Alshon, Lamb. Canterbury. Maybe with the advantage now, territory and possession. Will they head as far as they can towards the posts? Quinn is off, and Bell is out there for Eastern Suburbs. What an important penalty. Dunn had broken free, but East inside the five. Well, I would hate to see this game result in a, uh, a win to one side or the other on the basis of that. Uh, the referee could quite advantageously let the play go there and play advantage because uh, Dunn had forcibly run to the defence and busted them. Whether he'd have scored or not is another matter, but certainly they would have been travelling upfield. But uh, I think any fair-minded person would agree that uh, they don't want to see this game with the uh, great effort that Eastern Suburbs have put in go against them in the event that this kick is successful. 100% record from Corcoran in the mud. 
If you owned him, you'd start him in the Sydney Cup at Randwick tomorrow. Around the corner for Corcoran. The crowd put pressure on him. Strikes it well. Touch judges don't move too far. Vital kick handled the pressure well. Canterbury 12, East 10. 32 metres away from the Canterbury Banks down line. McGarn. Bridge dummy half for George Arliss again. The little kick through. And he's going to get the penalty. Well, George Arliss put the kick through and ran straight in. I think it was Haggath he ran in. Yes, Haggath. And the referee is alleging that he did step sideways and put himself in the way of George Arliss. So that's uh, only a decision the referee can make. He saw whether it was deliberate or not. The, the claim He's claiming, of course, it wasn't. But uh, they've got to take the kick for goal here. And uh, I would suggest to you that uh, the fellow that's going to take it, Sherlock, who's already had one success, is going to be as nervous as a kitten and he'll have every right to be. This to tie up the football game. Let's have a look at it. It's there. It's there. Eastern Suburbs come back to level at 12 Hall against Canterbury. The crowd is just on bananas. And we've got, let's see how long we've got to go. About three minutes, two minutes. A play left. Farrah kicks it deep, of course. Silver and he's in goal. Making himself an early target with the uh, with the slide. And Canterbury will be desperately looking for the football, and they might well get it because the knock-on has come. So this scrum is going to go down ten metres away. It'll be a Canterbury next down feed. George Alice doesn't know where to look at the moment. We're into the last minute of the game. George Alice, who made the error and has given Canterbury back the ball, doesn't know where to look. Here's Lamb. They may well be looking for a field goal. Barra, content to just go straight ahead. Now Alchin, swinging it out for Langmack. The little kick through. Delroy's gone back for it. I think Delroy got there first. Only just. Yes, well, a very exciting moment for uh, Eastern Suburbs. They, there was a danger here that the try might be scored against them, but uh, he was able to get back into the in-goal area. There's the header for full time, and the score has uh, come up with a, a win, a, a drawn game, 12 all, and that really probably is the best way it should have gone. For the Eastern Suburbs side and their 12 points, Smith and Silva were the try scorers. Uh, they've scored two to one against Canterbury. Alchin was their scorer. Sherlock kicked two goals, consecutive goals, and Cochrane had a perfect record, four goals.